slip for being late. I will, honey. From the principal's office, and you have to say it's your fault. Not a problem. Do you, do you want cream cheese? I want waffles. I'm sorry. We don't have time. It's really embarrassing being late. Everybody in class looks at you. Sweetie, I think we've established that you're going to be late and that it's my fault. Can we move on? I know why your alarm didn't go off. Because I'm a terrible mother and I forgot to set it. Uh, how, how far do you want to go with this? No. It's because the house is haunted. Really? Yeah, stuff gets moved in my room all the time. It's called cleaning. I do that occasionally. No, somebody plays with my Game Boy and my computer and somebody eats all my nerds. I hate the nerds. Did you play with my Game Boy? No. Somebody did. The apartment is haunted. The apartment is bad. It's not haunted. Let's go. When am I going to live with Daddy? What? I heard him talking to Alicia. He said I'm going to a private school and I come to live with him. Are you tired of living with me? No. Sweetheart, of course not. Daddy just feels like he wants to spend more time with you. But but that doesn't mean you're going to live with him. You'll just visit him more. Or not. We're not sure. We're still talking about it. Because I'd rather live with you, even if the apartment is haunted. I don't mind. I haven't told anyone. Well, because I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> you are in China for the foreseeable future, and, and we haven't really agreed on what we're doing, and, uh, and when I do decide to say something about whatever it is we think we're doing, um, you should be here. No, I'm not wearing it. Um... I'm a little bit afraid of it. I do love it. And you. <laughs> I'm uh, officially blushing, Jared. I have to go. Bye. The reason people choose mediation is that it provides a less uh, expensive, less combative approach to altering a custody arrangement. In my experience, it's particularly effective when two parties, such as yourselves, come from legal backgrounds and have already reached some kind of abstract, amicable agreement. Point of order. We don't have an agreement. We agreed to try mediation. That's about as far as it goes. Also, I'm pretty hostile. I see. I have no desire to alter the custody agreement. Well, Michael says that you and he have a pretty friendly relationship, so... Had. Had. That's before he started trying to steal my daughter. Our daughter? 36 hours of labor. Well, thanks, Amy, for giving this a chance. Lauren has lived with me since we separated. She has finally adjusted to the schedule. She's happy. She's thriving. Why would anyone who cared about Lauren want to disrupt that? She's thriving. She gets straight A's. She's a blue belt in karate. She's invited over to a sleepover every week. She hates your apartment. She misses your mother. She tells me things, Amy. Uh, okay, so the solution is to move her back to New York so she can miss me and my mother? I work at home. Leisha works at home. We live in Westchester. The neighborhood where we live is full of children. I'm her mother. Oh, oh okay. Let, let's take a moment. Everybody breathe. Also, Michael has been saying inappropriate things to learn about the custody dispute. What? She heard you and Leisha talking. 
That's eavesdropping. I haven't said anything to Lauren. You have always underestimated her ability to pick up on things. No, I think it would be productive if you both come up with your ideal schedule. You know, perfect world kind of thing. We can negotiate from there. My perfect world? I want Lauren during the school year. Amy can have her holidays and summer. Weekends are negotiable. My perfect world? Oh, Miss Gray, it's a jumping off point. Jumping off point? I'm trying to help. Here's my perfect world. I take us back nine years, and Lauren is a baby, and Michael is not obsessed with Wall Street or working around the clock. Instead, he shows up to family dinners and birthdays. Also, in my perfect world, he doesn't tell me that I've become boring or one-dimensional since becoming a mother. Green, also, can... in my perfect world, he doesn't suddenly discover his religion of fatherhood when he marries a woman who wants an instant family, and he wouldn't dream of hurting his daughter to try to accommodate that. Amy... As far as a jumping-off point, start there. Morning. Morning. Not really. You pay for DCF. She was What is that? Oh, you know, blah, 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 the system, victim of the hour. Make room for that Nobel Peace Prize, Kimberly. I'll have a bus left for rehab. Then they said I could get her back. I suppose I go see her every weekend or something. That's what the judge said. Is there something I can do to help? Yes, Maxine Gray, Francis Keene. She seems to have lost contact with her child. I have not lost contact with anyone. I go to pick my baby up at Janine's house. She says DCF came and snatched her. Who is Janine? Uh, Francis's cousin. She had temporary custody of her daughter, Lola. And uh, how old is Lola? She's three. And uh, how long has she been in the system? Two months, something like that. Janine's the one who turns me in for neglect. And now she lets my baby get snatched up. Did someone in our office place her? We haven't made that determination yet. Why don't you give us some time to sort through our files? I'm sure we can clean this up today. When you find her, do I get my baby back? No, she will still have to go through the court system, but you'll be able to resume your visitation. Man, Janine's all over me being messed up. I never lost Lola. That's for damn sure. She is not lost, Miss Keene. I, I assure you. Oh, I go on sabbatical for a month and look what happens. You're preaching to the choir, Maxine. Is it ringing one? Uh, family heirloom. Judge Gray, the first item on the agenda is Rhonda Petty, a repeat offender. The charge is burglary. If she is sentenced, DCF would have to remove a minor child from her care. Uh, the judge can read her own docket. We're burning daylight here. Donna. Sorry, Judge Gray. Rhonda, I, uh, I can't say that it's, it's good to see you. I've enjoyed your significant absence from my courtroom. Judge Gray, this is so not my fault. Well, we have a lot of issues before us today. I'm sure everyone would like a chance to speak. So uh, let's start with you, Mr. Kirk. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ms. Petty, who was already on probation for drug possession charges from four months ago, was arrested at a party where alcohol was present. My client was not drinking, Your Honor. Her being there was a violation of said probation. Then there's the matter of the fact that the house was broken into. The house was empty, Judge Gray. I didn't even know the guy who was throwing the party. It's a current trend, Your Honor. Breaking into vacant houses, usually upscale homes on the market, and inviting 200 of your closest friends over. In this case, damages to the home were upwards of $15,000. More like five. Wait, I was with a friend. She said we were going to a pool party. We get there, there isn't even a pool. Judge Gray, the two boys who orchestrated this event were fined and released. Rhonda is only here because of her past troubles. Which is as it should be, Miss Shepard. We're asking for 12 months' detention. We're asking the court consider Rhonda's one-year-old son, Austin, who may have to be placed in the system if she went into lockup. We're not convinced that's a bad thing. Oh, where's DCF? I have the report here, Judge Gray. Uh, Rhonda's been an exemplary mother on all accounts for the last several months. Exemplary mothers don't break into houses to attend keg parties. First of all, I, I don't want a report. I want a body from DCF. Y you both know that nothing can happen here unless she's represented. I'm prepared to serve as her guardian ad litem for this hearing. Well, that's, that's not good enough. I'm, I'm looking at multiple issues here, and, I, and I'm very uncomfortable with the amount of information I have. So, um, we'll reconvene tomorrow morning. I have to come back again? Yeah, you have a lot at stake here, Rhonda. 
I'm trying to keep you out of lockup, in school, and with your child. I hope you take that seriously. Moving on. I need a bathroom break. Fourth time this morning. Anna. It looks like an engagement ring. We have absolutely no record on Lola Kane. Does, does Frances remember the name of the judge who placed her? No. She was stoned when they snatched the kid in a rehab in the court order of the OTC. Are you engaged, Maxine? No. But maybe. I don't know. I, I can't talk to you about this, Sean. Why not? Because I haven't talked to my family. Why? You don't think they'll be happy? I don't know. I've, I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I'm engaged. I don't know if my daughter is speaking to me. But mostly I don't know where a three-year-old child is. So if I could get back to work... Bruce! <laughs> it's so good to see you. Our probation officer's in the building. Oh. I need to get my stuff out of your chambers. Whenever it's a good time. Anytime. Just just call me. So what what are you doing? Uh, going to school. Going to work, taking care of Rebecca. What kind of work? It's part time, pays the bills. We miss you, Bruce. I wish we could. But why don't we go out for dinner, have a drink sometime? I don't think so. Why not? I'll be by after hours to pick up my stuff. I'll leave my key on your desk. Bruce. It's good to see you, Judge Gray. been on the market for over a month. It's time to drop the price, Mother. This is my home, Peter. I am not about to give it away. Is that beard going to work in the insurance world? I'm the boss. Who's going to complain? I'm complaining. Is it some sort of midlife crisis? No, it's facial hair. And it's time for you to depersonalize the house situation, Mother. This is a business transaction. But it is personal, Peter, and it's not like she's in a hurry to move. That isn't the point. And maybe she'll decide that she doesn't want to move at all. It's not like she's got anything big on the horizon. Bankruptcy? That's big. Don't be melodramatic. I can sell some worthless stock. That's for your imaginary retirement. <laughs> what do you think of the beard? She likes it. I like it. And don't change the subject. Sorry I'm late for family breakfast. Where's family breakfast? I changed it to a root around for yourself buffet. And yeah, that tradition didn't last long. Maxine, what a beautiful ring. Where'd you get that? Uh, this whole thing. I've had it for ages. It belonged to Cousin Emily. Cousin Emily, the Carmelite nun? Jenny. Cousin Jenny. Well, it looks brand new. You should sell that instead of the house. Aren't you all amusing? Who wants coffee? Yeah. Start it, won't you, Jillian? Hmm. Cousin Jenny. Hmm. Good morning. Why aren't you in China? Because I got on a plane right after I hung the phone up yesterday. You did? Because I want a once and for all answer. You do? Maxine, do you intend to marry me? Yes or no? I'm wearing the ring. Uh, that wasn't the question. Yes or no? Yes. Good. Are you going back to China now? Well, not until we tell your family. Uh, my family? Yeah, well, your family first, then mine. Well... Of course we can tell them, but um, now is not a good time. Why not? Maxine, coffee! Coming! Because uh, everyone is here. Well, perfect. Except Amy. And it wouldn't be fair to tell the others without telling Amy. Well, are you and Amy speaking? Of course we are. Well, good. <laughs> then we'll just get the family together tonight and we'll tell them. Tonight? Well, uh, wouldn't a uh, quiet dinner between the two of us be more fun? Maxine... Are you afraid of your children? No. Because they're going to have to get used to this whole idea. Frankly, I don't believe it myself until I get some witnesses. Couldn't we have dinner alone tonight? Um, I 
I'd like a little time to get used to the idea before I start announcing it. Please. I don't know why I even put up a fight. I'll pick you up at eight. Just tell your family I was somebody selling God. Or vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jankowski is about to tell me that if we wait any longer, my docket will turn into a colossal mess. So what should we do? Your Honor, my client is a high school student who has to provide her own transportation to and from court. She's only 15 minutes late. 20. And she shouldn't be late at all. I could issue a warrant for her arrest. I'm, I'm also beyond annoyed about the persistent absence of DCF in all this. This is sloppy work across the board. What the hell is going on? <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's put this on the docket for tomorrow. Ms. Shepard, I would advise you to uh, stack the deck in Rhonda's favor. This is her last chance. I appreciate that, Your Honor. I hope you do. When you were gone, I had to take on all your cases. I delegated some of mine in order to make room. So... You might have handled Lola Keene's case. It doesn't ring a bell. I gave a lot of stuff to Eric Ellsworth. The same Eric Ellsworth who left us to Eric pursue Ellsworth. surfing? And he dumped some stuff on Robert. Try checking with him. I checked with him. He said to check with you. I don't appreciate this, Maxine. There's a clerical screw-up and you're automatically pinning it on me. This is more than a clerical screw-up, Kimberly. There's a child lost in the system. I'm telling you, it doesn't ring a bell. You were the original caseworker when Lola was removed from Francis Keene. You signed the request for the OTC. All that means is that I was around and I had a pen. I didn't handle the case. I didn't place her. I didn't snatch her. Then who did? I don't know. Stop hassling me. Can I go online and check my emails? No. You don't have any emails. Daddy lets me have an account. Taylor and I email each other. Well, you don't have an account here. Where's that music coming from? Did you turn the stereo on this morning? No, you don't let me touch it. Hey, look, my Game Boy. I told you. You know who we haven't seen in ages? Cousin Kyle. We're going out on a school night? Cool. I, I'm so sorry to interrupt your evening, Maxine. It's all right. Sean, you remember Jared? Wait, of course. Good to see you again. You too. Yeah. So they might have found Lola Keene. I got a call from the Hartford PD. They found a child's body. A girl about three. Kid matches the description. I'm sorry. I understand. Call me later. I'll be up. See you, Sean. Good night, Jared. I'm sorry, Maxine. Can't be helped. We need to pick up Francis and go to the morgue. Then let's go. Well, uh, nothing matches, but everything's clean. That's the motto here at Shea Kozlowski McCarty. How's uh, Rob Zombie working out? Uh, great. Great, I feel very close to him. You have to give it back. Mommy, can I have some Skittles? Only three. Where'd you get those? In the couch. Man, those things hold up well. Please, I haven't brushed my teeth yet. Then go brush your teeth. Well, come on. I'll show you fun things to do with floss. Yeah. I've won titles in this. Is your apartment haunted? I don't know. The answer is, of course not, Donna. Uh, of course not. <laughs> no more pillows, but I have a really soft sweatshirt and a whoopee cushion. Is the sweatshirt clean? Pretty much. Thanks. I'm okay. This was the same guy who broke into Maxine's house? I didn't buy the haunted apartment story. I don't know. 
Oh, look, it was probably nothing. I didn't see any sign of forced entry. I was probably tired and freaked out for no reason. Did you call the police? And say what? That I left my stereo on? It's your job. Nobody's going to blame you for being cautious. I told Vincent that I would try harder with you. Harder at what? Being there. So if there's anything you need from an underachieving ex-junkie, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks. Last call for the open cushion. I said... I know I'm on a month-to-month -month lease. That means I can never get my locks changed. No, I'm not in trouble with the authorities. I am the authorities. Oh, my God. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just a, a little, little jumpy. That's all. D change the locks and bill me. All right? Thank you. I'm sorry. I thought I'd be done before you got in. No, that's, that's all right. I'll be out of your way in a minute. What locks are you changing? Oh my, my bad apartment. Never felt safe there. Is there anything going on? N no, not, not really. So, I don't understand it, Bruce. Explain it to me. Explain what? Why we can't be friends. We have kids the same age. We've shared the same profession. We have the same political views. We, we, we get along. No way? Judge Gray, imagine how it feels for me to see you, to talk to you. I know, I know it's awkward, but, but friendships go through transitions all the time. I just can't see the day when I'll be able to sit back over a margarita and talk about the old days. So it's just a write-off, huh? Any connection we had, just obliterated. The thing about my life is different now. Mine too. That's why I can't afford to lose a friend right now. We used to be colleagues, Judge Gray. Now we're not even that. I guess I never saw it that way. I know. I'll let you finish up. How's your day shaping up? I, I just walked in the door. Well, don't get comfortable. You have to be in court. For what? Delinquency. One of yours. Got passed on during the sabbatical. Now it's back. I am not prepared to be in court on such short notice. I didn't sleep last night. Just go to court, explain everything to the judge, you'll get a continuance. This place is a mess, Sean. I see, I'm doing the best I can with budget cuts and half the staff I need. You never should have suspended me. Ooh, the idea of you being dead bothered me at the time. Here, can we move on from this now? What's this? Lola Keen Martinez, filed under the father's name. She's with the Pattersons out in Marlowe. You found her? Yes. Thank me later. Wait, well, uh, how did this fall through the cracks? I mean, who picked her up? I applied for the OTC and let the kids stay for that first week or two with a cousin, but she couldn't be licensed, so Eric snatched her. He was supposed to follow up with me. No, you were supposed to follow up with him. What's the difference? We found her. Would you like to explain what we did last night? What we put that woman through? Maxine, 
Don't you dare walk away from me. This is not lost luggage. These are people's children. Maxine, go to court. This woman thought her child was dead. She was standing at the morgue last night. Where the hell were you? I can't take much more of this. Kimberly, go to your desk. Maxine, go to court. Go, now. Well, I see we still don't have anyone from DCF today, but I'm glad you could make it, Rhonda. I had to bring Austin. I wouldn't take him at daycare because he's a fever. I've known the feeling. Also, I'm missing a calculus test. Your Honor, I'd like to point out that Rhonda's been on the honor roll the last two semesters. She's also on track for an academic scholarship to a four-year university. This is a considerable feat, considering she's lived in 11 different foster homes since she was 10 years old, and she has done all this while providing care for an infant son. No one is saying that she hasn't had some obstacles to overcome, Judge Gray, but this most recent charge is indicative of someone who simply does not appreciate the number of chances she's been given. Putting her into lockup for this minor violation... Burglary? Minor? ...would catapult Austin into the foster care system, thus separating him from his mother for an indeterminate amount of time. Excuse me. Your Amy. Honor. Are you in the right place? I, I'm, uh... I'm representing DCF in the matter of, uh, Rhonda Petty. And I thought that she was appearing before Judge Vine. No. No, it's on my docket, Miss Gray. Then what should we do? Uh, uh, approach the bench. Uh, I'm sure you all understand the problem here. Uh, the DCF uh, representative, Maxine Gray, is my mother. Would anyone like me to recuse myself? It could take DCF a month to transfer this case. We don't have that kind of time. Nor do we. I take your honor's word that there's no bias. You have it. Is this all right for you, Miss Gray? Fine. I would uh, appreciate a little time to prepare. I've just inherited this. Fine. Uh, I'll give you one day. That's generous. Your honor. It's true I missed a lot of Lauren's early life, but I want to make up for that now. I want to have a closer relationship with her. I want her to get to know Alicia. She needs to think of us as a family. I have no desire to take her away from Amy. I just want my chance to prove what kind of parent I can be. Amy's had the life she's wanted with Lauren for three years. Don't I get my turn? The life I wanted? We can't change what happened. I'm talking about the future. I want Lauren to grow up in a house, surrounded by family. I want her to live on a nice block where she has kids to play with. She can feel safe. These are the things I feel I can offer. Not very exciting, but stable. You'll always be her mother. Nothing can interfere with that, Amy. We're talking about living conditions. That's all. Day-to-day, uh, -day, what's most practical. Amy? What? Do you have a response to that? Do you ever wonder how things got this way, Michael? How we ended up like this? Despite our best intentions? <laughs> I think about that a lot. If somebody had asked us on our wedding day, do you think you could ever become adversaries? Do you think you could square off and fight over pieces of your life like marbles or trading cards? Imagine what we would have said. No. Oh. Michael, why don't you give us your uh, ideal schedule again? <laughs> 
She's with me um, during the week while school is in session. With Amy every other weekend, holidays. And summers? Summers are hers, absolutely. Remember when we saw the picture of the ultrasound for the first time? We looked at this picture of this squirmy little thing and he said, he said, well, she looks nice. I want to think about it. Can I take some time to do that? Of course. I'm not, I'm not walking out. I'm just, I just want to think. Michael? Fine. It's fine with me. The issue before me is Rhonda Petty's participation in an alleged felony of burglary. Who wants to start? The DCF needs to go on record, Judge Gray. Uh, very well. The court will hear from DCF. I know what is going to argue that Miss Petty's behavior in recent months has been uh, reasonable or mature. The party was a particularly ill-advised idea. But the charge of burglary seems equally misguided. We are encouraged that Rhonda has maintained a uh, 3.8 average at school. She has remained in her current foster home for almost two years after a long history of running away. Austin seems to be in good health, is up to date on his shots, has a decent daycare and is developmentally on schedule. Your Honor, this is a delinquency hearing, not neglect. It's impossible to separate the issues. Austin's future is also at stake. Are we supposed to let Ms. Petty use her son as a get-out-of-jail-free card? Any other person with her record would be sent to lockup. Uh, no, any other person with her record would get the same kind of individual attention. All extenuating circumstances taken into account. That's why they call us juvenile court and stick us at the other end of the hall, Mr. Kirk. Uh, Your Honor, I have more. Go ahead. Uh, Rhonda is... Um... A 16-year-old, and hence she behaves like one. She has questionable judgment. She makes rash, immature decisions. She lives a little too much in the moment and thinks too little about the consequences. There's no psychologist or parent who would consider this anything but annoyingly typical. But uh, Rhonda also happens to be a mother, and uh, before a court can make a decision about a punishment to fit her crime, that needs to be considered. She won't always be 16. Uh, Your Honor, but she will always be Austin's mother. If that bond is broken, it will have an impact that neither one of them can begin to understand for years. Nothing can make up for it. Sometimes we, we have to sever these ties for the good of uh, all parties, and that is precisely the challenge that we face. How many times can a mother fall short? How many mistakes does she get? And how many chances? What we're avoiding talking about, and what we very much need to talk about, is the bond between mother and child. I'm sure Your Honor understands the importance of that relationship. I believe in the elasticity of this uh, connection. I believe it has to bend in order to endure. And so, Your Honor, I would ask you to consider that, to make room for this mother's mistakes, to trust in her potential, to accept her apology. Has she apologized? I, I believe that's happening uh, right now. Go ahead. I am sorry, Judge Gray. Well, with the uh, consent of the uh, assistant state's attorney, um, I am reducing the charge to trespassing and extending Rhonda's probation. Austin will stay in his mother's care and uh, 
DCF will continue to monitor the situation. Yes, Your Honor. We'll meet back here in three months. Rhonda, I do not want to see you in here before that. Are you clear? Yes, Judge Gray. I, I will not let you down. Thank you so much. Thank you, lawyer. And your social worker. We're adjourned. Thank you. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? All right. Dinner at the, at the house tonight. Uh, seven o'clock. The family will be there. Please don't say no. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. She gave me an ultimatum. And you chose me? I'm a weak man. She is a terrible social worker. Compared to you? Compared to anyone. We can't just keep people employed because they have a, a pulse and evidence of brain activity. I've seen. But when, when people in this office screw up, children die, Sean. But she's leaving. What more can I do? Tell me you agree. That, that it's not just... Aging idealism, tell me that it is important for us to do our job correctly. I don't think I want to live in a world where caring and commitment to one's profession is considered quaint or eccentric. I agree with you, Maxine. What's more, I think I'm in love with you. Too late. I'm engaged. I knew it. Don't tell anybody. Congratulations. I hope so. Uh, this is the first time I ever made gasoline. I don't usually try to get this fancy. Yeah. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. It smells wonderful. Yeah, well, the truth is, I just mix the ingredients. Maxine told me what to do. It was a completely joint effort, unless it's bad and then it's all your fault. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, Jared, imagine our surprise to hear you're uh, back from China. And then back in China. And then back again. Yeah, well, in fact, I am kind of hard to keep track of. That's true, yeah. Will you be able to stay around for a while? Well, no, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go back tomorrow. Are you moving your operations over there permanently? Yeah, well, uh, that all depends. Lauren, pass your plate. I don't like casserole. Light. You don't know what it is. If it was good, I would know about it by now. Just try, try a little bit, sweetheart. You know, I'm a latecomer to the party, so how do you two know each other? Well, uh, we have been friends for... Nonsense. We're in love. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Big fan of that myself. Okay, can I have some wine, please? No. Oh, no, God, this is delicious. Maxine, you have found a man that can cook. Don't ever let him out of your sight. <laughs> <laughs> I cook. Oh, well, of course you do, sweetheart. I have a little more wine. Well, I guess you're uh, wondering why you're all here. I'm going to go with evolution and natural selection. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter, uh, why don't you make an argument for creationism? I like a good ontological discussion over French food. Well, fact is, I have asked Maxine to marry me. And I have said yes. Well, I'll jump in. I think that's great. Thanks. 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 Well, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks. Congratulations. Cheers. Is there going to be a wedding? Can I be in it? Oh, sweetheart, we haven't made those kind of decisions yet. Well, where are you going to live? Should we, should we take the house off the market? Peter, I don't know. Well, we going. don't really know yet. Everything we'll just so go new. one step at a Amy? time. huh? <laughs> Can I see you in the kitchen for a minute? Excuse us. Oh. Okay, can Lauren spend the night here tonight? What? If it's not okay, I can ask Julian. No, of course it's all right. Why? Because uh, I'm going home to get very drunk, and I don't want her to be around for that. 
Amy, I deserve the rest of my life. Of course you do. I'm... I'm just... I'm just having a hard time. Tell me. God. Bruce. Are you okay? Not really. Do you want to come in? I thought I might. God, this is awful. I know. Go, go sit down. So, what's going on? I'm sorry about what I said. It wasn't true and it was unnecessarily hurtful. I think I was trying to push you away. Why? We were colleagues. That was our relationship. Without it, I didn't know how to be around you. I was working so hard to maintain that professional distance. And now it doesn't matter. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> and my mother is getting married. Well, I'm a felon, and my mother lives in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill this bottle of wine and, and watch bad movies on TV. Sounds like a plan. Okay. This is the worst apartment I've seen since college. I know. And you know what the scary thing is? I'm beginning to like it. <laughs> Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime. Will McCoy risk it all to win a case? Find out on Law & Order, next on 